my name is Beth Hadley here for Working Geek at Gen Con 2019. I'm sitting down with Gonzalo Aguilé from Thundergriff right. Games, and you've brought us hats. Correct, yes. This has been a title people have been really excited about this show. It's been a lot of chatter on BGG. Uh, I was very excited that I got to play this right before the I'm show so started. I'm so glad you played it. I know. You could have explained yourself. I could have explained it myself, but let's get from the expert. All right. <laughs> we have been invited at the Matt Harris Garden to drink tea and play a game of hots. Oh, if only we, we, need, we, we forgot our teacups. <laughs> yeah, it's true, it's true. So we will be dealing a nine cards to each player. Uh, we will deal one card, uh, randomly card, to each table spot. Um, I won't like go into the setup. When you play two players, you're removing suits. You're playing up to the fifth spot, but we'll, you're playing we'll with everything. We'll pretend we're a four-player game. Of course, mm -hmm. even three players, yeah. it's fine. So the idea um, in Hats is that we have our hand of cards, nine cards, and we'll play eight, and we will keep one. Um, we will have to exchange our hats with the ones on the table, and by doing so, we will collect the hat we are exchanging. So um, to exchange hats with the table, we can do in two ways. Uh, the first one is color, you can get color, so blue can get blue. And, will... and it goes in front of you. Exactly, it goes in front of me, and I will collect this cat. When you collect a hat, it's yours forever. Nobody yep. can steal it, it's, it's yours to keep. Now, um, the other way you can collect a hat is by playing a higher color than the one you're getting. So in this and case... And the color doesn't have to match then. Exactly, exactly. So in this case, I could get this three, as I could get this four, or, or, or other, this other three. So, in this case, I got two hats, and um, there is also an optional action, which is I can discard a hat at any time during my turn, and I'm, I'm not losing my turn for doing this. Right, it's, it's in a addition free action. to. Exactly. Yep. So, I will discard one, and I will get one. Uh, you do this sometimes because it's, it's necessary, because you want to get something, or you do this because it's just you are so curious to know what is inside, right? <laughs> that it might be better something, yeah. So, um, at this point, we will just keep playing, and so let's say that the game will end this way. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We know there's always going to be eight, eight. cards out. Yeah, yep. so we have. We'll I don't like this, so wait. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, this makes more sense. Okay, so the game is over. We have eight cards in front of us, and we have one left in our hand. Now, how we score in the game? We have three ways of scoring. Uh, the first one is, of course, with the hat collection. Yep, so. Um, so we will see that on the table we have numbers from one to six, and those represent victory points of that certain suit. So the idea with every, every exchange we are doing, we are altering the value of each suit. And of course, if your suit is not on the table, as intelligently I got to green, then I would get zero points out of right, this color. Right, because green's not represented on Correct. the sport. Now, it, it, it might happen that uh, a color is repeated on the table. So we got two reds here. Exactly. When that happens, we will just flip the highest plate number, and so the, the, the card will, will have a single value, right? Um, at and this then point, this is the value of each card of correct, that color. Correct, each card. We are not counting face value, we're just seeing the colors of the hats. So I have a brown here, I get five points out of this, I get four points out of this because it's two each, yep. and so on and so, so, on, on. so on. The second way of scoring is with the cookie. Uh, the cookie will go to the player that has the most variety of hats. And that means different colors. If we are tied with a variety, so I have five and you also have five, the tiebreaker will be the lowest card among us. And finally, uh, as I said, we deal nine, but we just play eight. Right. So we have one last card in our hand, and it's the one we keep because it's our favorite hat. How do you <laughs> score this one? And it's basically, you will sum up the face value of each colored card you chose. In this case, it's seven. And you will subtract the, the, one the one you got left in your hand. So in this case, I would do seven minus one, six. So don't hang on to the highest Correct, color of your favorite color. Correct, because this can go negative for sure. <laughs> now, the game plays two to four. In two, three players, you will be uh, competing among yourselves. And in four players, since we are dealing uh, all the cards in the deck, and you cannot exchange cards with the deck, you have to play in teams. So in couples, and the only way you can communicate with your, with your teammate is not by using any color or any number. No, you cannot mention those, so you have to exchange hats. Uh, in, that, in, that, in that case, uh, let's say that you have this one, I have this one, we will exchange simultaneously and you will see the card that I passed, and I can give you information like, for example, um, I don't know how many of these you have, or I need those cards, right. or um, I don't know, uh, 
you can say, for example, I can pass this one to you and I can say, please play that card, because it's all a momentum uh, in this game. We only have seven suits, and each suit is represented by six cards that go from all one to six. evenly distributed. Yeah. Exactly. All the, uh, unless we play a black hat, I didn't explain that, because we don't have always to play a hat on the table, we can always uh, play face down by creating a black hat. That will be a point and one mess with the table, but mainly all the cards are face up. So you right. can count, you can understand what the opponents might have, and you can play your cards wisely to maximize your score. So I had mentioned too that, because I am a huge sucker for magnet closed boxes, uh, that this indeed is, is actually a, a little bookcase box, Correct. which I love, and with a magnet clasp, because we love that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I, I love that you guys really took the time to sort of detail Thank you, the inside much. to really make yeah. to bring that book feeling all the way through to the inside as well. Um, and then you don't have it here, but it also includes a score sheet as well, just for yes, doing uh, the, the math. Yes, the score sheet is mm -hmm. over here. So uh, we put the cookie over okay, here, there, but oh, there it the is. score sheet is right uh. about here. So we, we can calculate <laughs> the score in an easy way, for sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, I remember thinking when we played this a few nights ago, I was like, wow, you really gave everything and a few extras. like. You could have just said there's a cookie bonus, but you actually yeah. put in a plastic well, cookie. The, the, the mechanism is called the last cookie, right? So the cookie will pass along the table, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, it's yeah, part of the. It's bringing up the theme not only in the art but also in the gameplay. Uh, this is the first one of a series of games we're doing that is uh, called Made in Wonderland, and it's always ah. based in fable or fairy tales. Wonderful. Yes. Now, last question before I uh, before I wrap things up is: uh, Did you have an inspiration for all these really fantastic, amazing hat illustrations? Well, this is the effort mm -hmm. of, of Pier Paolo, which is uh, the art director of this game, and uh, and uh, Paolo Voto, which is the artist. Uh, and we we wanted to bring since it's the first uh, game of this line, we wanted to bring a little bit of vibe of many fairy tales and many and many uh, tales in general. So each card represents uh, a different fairy tale. For example, this one is uh, the Little Red Riding Hood. And we have ah. hidden uh, some elements in the card. So for example, if you can see here, there is the fruit basket and there is a huge wolf. I don't know if you can see the wolf over there. Poking out his feet mm, out the bottom? No, ma'am. It's basically, if you can see here, there is the tail. Then there is the legs, and the oh, face is right here. Wow. So we had fun like hitting some uh, some even smaller Easter eggs in the card. So while you play, you're looking at something, and then you just color different things each time. And let's leave it at that because I would love for that to be a Absolutely. discussion that's on the, your that's website the part of the game. or on BGG, like for people to talk about like what they Correct. can find in those cards, knowing Absolutely. that there's some hidden elements, some inspirations in each one of these hats designed. I am so glad I asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you guys want to check that out, this is Hats, which is the first of, uh, you called it your Wonder... Made in Wonderland. Made in Wonderland series, which is being published by Thunder Griff Games. And Gonzalo, thank you so much for giving thank us a you. quick tour. Thank you. Uh -huh.